Hello, welcome to Anson Griffith's vocational series in MATLAB tutorials. Today we're looking at a MATLAB demo file uh, on calibrated stereo image rectification. I'll be making a few comments and I've added some more of my own comments. So hopefully, if for those of you that are reasonably new to this, to learn something from it. So now we won't be doing homogeneous equations or singular value decomposition. I mean, that's all going on in the background, but if you've come to learn SVD and solving homogeneous equations, uh, it's not on this YouTube video. So we're taking, um, as I say, just this is not my work. We're taking it from the MATLAB demo file. And we've I've published it. And I've made out my table of contents there. So first thing up is why would you carry this out? And I have my own comments here in green. I'm just going to zoom a little bit. So uh, so if you in GIS or photogrammetry, if you had several images, uh, oh, you'd hopefully have a fair bit of overlap and you'd be able to stitch them together into a common coordinate system or here a you know, correspondence problem and down here i've mentioned a correspondence problem is where you have several overlapping images and you want to make a panorama so as you can imagine you have to detect points of interest you have to work out the various projective transformations to make them into as it were the same image from the viewpoint of the camera and then stitch them together. So, uh, and today we'll be using, uh, just highlight it there, the fundamental matrix. And the fundamental matrix is used when the camera is uncalibrated in stereo image uh, rectification and the essential matrix would be used when you have a calibrated uh, camera. So by calibrated camera, that you know the um, intrinsic, you know, like the the principal point and um, the distortion and all that sort of stuff. So we just have two images today of Yellowstone left and Yellowstone right, and we display the images side by side. Uh, they didn't quite come out perfectly because I have it zoomed so much, but you can see on the left and on the right. And you would imagine just looking at them. Now, I only have half the one on the right uh, due to my zoom. And then there's a composite image there uh, and standard stuff. Uh, red is the left and sign is the right. And just to get the composite there. I am show pair. Okay, when we scroll down here, uh, you can see that there's an obvious, as I say here, uh, difference in orientation and position. And the color is to align them so as if there would be no overlap, or oh, sorry, that the overlap would be 100%. So we have to collect points of interest. And we're going to use a surf command. So we use the MATLAB function there. Uh, to just highlight it there. Detect surf features. Okay. So we're going to detect the blobs in the left and the right. And we're going to show them there. And we're going to show the 30 strongest in each. So, so there's the 30 strongest in the left image. And there's the 30 strongest in the right. So that's using surf. Now you could use other stuff, or other methods to get the strongest points, but we're just going with surf today. So next thing we want to do is extract features and match features. So if I just zoom a little bit here. So 
So we're getting some feature vectors and I could just highlight that bit. They're the equivalent of explanatory variables. You know when you'd be plotting y against x1, x2, x3, x4. So there's you're getting the features and valid blobs for the left. And then you're getting it from the right. And then we're going to match the features. I'm just going to zoom out again here ever so slightly. So uh, we're here. We're going to match them uh, using the match features command. And there's two methods. There's the sum squared difference and the sum absolute difference. Now, there's very little difference between them. You know, it's just a metric. So you're just trying to find the best match. Okay. So. So we've done that uh, here. And then we get to locations there and there and then we show the match features on one image so it's MATLAB's go at showing where they think we have common points of interest So next thing, we're going to use the epipolar constraint to remove the outliers. That'll be the, which we think of errors. And I took this bit, sorry about that. I might zoom in here a little bit. So we have to use an epipolar constraint. And sorry about it breaking over the line. Now I, this is from Wikipedia again. Full disclosure, I don't want to be claiming copyright of stuff that obviously isn't mine. So we just go down here a little bit. So the epipolar constraint that we have the left view and that when we look at it from the right view here, that this point must be on this epipolar line ER XR. So if the point isn't on the line ER XR, well then we, we get rid of it. So I'll just go back there. So the image below, if the projection point XL is known, then the epipolar line, epipolar line ER XR is known and the point X projects onto the right image. If it doesn't, get rid of it. So, and that's not part of that. That's just, I did, I did a screenshot of the epipolar constraint from Wikipedia and I just displayed it there and you see it down below. Now, here, estimate the fundamental matrix. Okay, so we're going to get the fundamental matrix, and there's a ton of stuff here. There's loads of options. Uh, MATLAB used the ransack method, but if you just go up here, there's various methods that one can use, and I've just copied and pasted them here. There's the, the L meds, there's norm eight point. Ransack, MSAC, and LTS. So, norm A point is the normalized A point, least median square, random sample consensus, medium estimator sample consensus, and least trim square. When you're calling the function estimated, estimate fundamental matrix here, okay, so you have your match points one, you have your match points two, your method ransack or least med or whatever the feck it is, the number of trials. Number of random trials for finding the outliers. Okay, 500 is the default. I think MATLAB put in a thousand. 
and then you can play around with these values here um, that's the distance for finding the threshold and the confidence so that's you probably just save for going with the default but you can change them to get uh, a better chance of removing the outliers if you're in no hurry you obviously want to remove much of the outliers as possible but if you're doing in return you might say I'll take it a chance and not be as thorough okay so there's the epic color constraint next thing is are the epi poles is their status good if we just go down here when you're doing this you want a fairly reasonable angle to make sure that the epi pole is in the frame if the images are at a subtle angle like they are here the epi poles are not in the frame so just going back to here you use this command here is epi pole in image if the epi pole isn't the image you stop you kick out you generate an error message like that and if it isn't the image happy days carry on next thing up then is let's get on with it let's rectify the two images so this guy estimate on calibrage we get two transforms transform one and transform two that's the projective 2d for the first one and the projective 2d for the second one and for those of you that know your way around the image processing toolbox you remember t form one and t form two is quite popular if you're new to it apologies but we're getting the command and this projective 2d and this projective 2d um they will provide the projective transformation that will get them onto the same core system we have the transform we're transforming i1 and we get the first image rectified and likewise uh, we get the se second image out here using im warp i2 the original image 2 transform 2 and then the output view is just to make sure that the reference is we get im ref there it's referring to the original one up there transform the points using transfer points forward and then show the match features and there we have it in effect okay crop the overlapping area just get rid of this junk down here using there we are and then matlab they just do this one this is a very little documentation on this command I couldn't find anything about it so I'm not a hundred percent okay with it but it seems to be you can just take two images and just slam them together and see what happens that I I don't want to say much more because I don't know much more so I think there's more to come on this uh, image here Okay, so I hope that's of some help to you. Thanks very much for listening. Bye.